Have you ever thought of creating a buggy at your home? This man from Kerala has created a buggy using a G13B engine at his home. This has a ton of modification. This got an ADJ gear shifter and it comes with the four disc brakes and it has a bigger radiator. Trust me bro, I can switch it on using this phone. Hey guys, welcome back to another another video. In this video, we are with a buggy and we are giving the detailed reviews of this buggy. Hey. Hey bro. Yeah. So he's the person behind this buggy. He made this buggy from scratch from home itself, right? Yes. Okay, so we are going to give a walk around through the back tunnel, right? Yeah. So how long it took for you to make the entire build? Uh actually like taking only the man hour, uh it only cost me like 8 uh, months. But if you're taking uh like all the hand work and all. Uh but I got academics so I had to focus on that also, but uh throughout uh, I I uh, it took me like 4 years. 4 years you took. Yeah. Nice nice. So when is first time you started at what age? I initially uh, started the engine uh, when I was like um, 17. 17 years yeah, old. 17. Nice bro. Like actually uh, fitted inside and uh, all, fitted all the connection and first time setting it up like I actually fitted all the exhaust and stuff then only I started that. So okay. I I get to hear this uh, sound sound of the oil engine. and all the setup uh, for the first time and it was so incredible nice nice yeah. nice so wh who was your inspiration actually I, I, it was basically a um, like some kind of uh, a project or something like that okay. yeah, initially like uh, when i was like nine uh, like ninth grade or something uh, i was so interested in rock crawler buggies and uh, at the time internet got a lot of Uh, it's similar buggies in there, so I inspired from that, and uh, I studied how how to build one uh, at the time. Initially, like there was no other buggy uh, in Kerala or India. Like they they were, but they were made like cheap stuff. Cheap they, stuff. There was no engineering going on in that. So I took the initiative and learned about how to properly build a buggy. Uh, I learned about the basic engineering and stuffs and. Um, and and designed all all the uh, how to design stuff yeah you you basically have to go through all this designing cat softwares you have to learn how to uh, bring what what actually had in your mind and to the reality so it can take a lot of time so i went through all those steps and properly uh, designed it and uh, like yeah so you have done a huge of homework yeah <laughs> homework was basically all all the stuff this this you thing you studied all. the basic things required to make a buggy the f in the first stand itself yes yes okay so after getting an engine what was your next move uh okay um i only got the engine like after the design okay your the design part was in the first stage yeah okay. basically i had this design in my mind and uh, i didn't know how to bring it to life Okay. So and that's why uh, I I I draw it, draw it on the paper. Okay. Initially For the drawing it on the paper, you have got a reference from the fighter jet or something. Yeah. Like yes. Like like uh, when you started drawing, you need some kind of inspiration. Like uh, all these curves, lines. Y you have to take some kind of inspiration from something something out there, no? So uh, I was so interested in fighter jets, especially the American F-22 Raptor and the F-23. Uh, this thing got this uh, like angles and some 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 straight lines which I was which I was so interested in and I actually uh, drawed it in the paper and uh, used that reference for uh, like designing this stuff from the front itself what all are there right now yeah um yeah, you can see a dr light here okay and beneath that uh, there's two headlight and um, basically this portion is a crumble zone so when you ever get a unfortunately if there's an accident happens or uh, if you hit something uh, you have to reduce that impact no? yeah so there's a crumble zone in order to reduce that impact okay. plus uh, there is a radiator that's a huge one uh, because the stock radiator that comes with that engine is 
uh, pretty much small. So that doesn't compensate the heat uh, that it produces uh, when it fits inside. Okay. So you have to uh, increase the radiator surface area. So that's why I choose the um, bigger radiator from a diesel engine. Mm -hmm. And it got a two cooling fan. Uh, plus that radiator comes in the front with, uh, uh, which will also increase the, uh, you know, the like crumble zones I impact protection uh, property. Okay. So the suspension used is? Um, it's a push rod one. Uh, you can basically adjust the ride height and the stiffness from here. So there's actually a, a rocker here which uh, connects with the suspension. And the like uh, the spring action comes from here. This is the push rod which actually actuates this spring as you can see here. So and there comes a sway bar. This okay. is also an adjustable sway bar so you can um, vary the uh, adjustability. Like you can adjust according to the roll that you need in a vehicle like if you are cornering too hard you need to stiff that up so that's going to compensate the rolling property plus um, yeah it's, uh, it will increase the handling capabilities of the vehicle also okay so yeah when it comes to drifting um, it's greatly impact on that what have you done any homework regarding the weight distribution of the car yeah um, uh, initially in my specifications or like uh, my own requirement I want to put the engine in the back side so that I can do this drifting and drifting, uh, rear wheel. Yeah, rear wheel. I want I want that actually uh, that rear wheel experience. experience. So that's why I put it in the back. Plus uh, the radiator in the front, uh, it also distributes some weight. But I'm I'm hoping like uh, there's actually a like 65 uh, 35 weight ratio oh. in the middle. Yeah, it's 65 oh. in the back and uh, 35 in the middle. That's a little bit off. Uh, but uh, it's acceptable considering the fact that I started building like in an early age, yeah. Is there any complications for making a rear wheel build? Yeah, th there was. Like uh, you need to make a new mechanism for the shifting, okay. gear shifting, and um, like actually mounting whole thing in the back. Uh, plus like uh, the clutch mechanism, uh, you need to uh, pull a cable for that. Okay. And uh, yeah, some some part of like uh, you need to actually make a new manifold uh, for the exhaust, and plus the front. Uh, I have actually made this one, okay. and actually I made everything myself. Everything <laughs> your own. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that uh, intake manifold was custom built, okay. and the exhaust manifold from there to here, everything is custom built. Custom built yeah. itself. So Anand, what hmm. you do? Yeah, uh, besides my studies, uh, I do some project on. There's actually a team called Horizon uh, Cusat. It's actually a, a team who builds Mars rover for worldwide competition. So I'm actually a chief designer in that. So uh, basically uh, my job is to build a robotic arm and how all things gonna work. Basically like uh, how how this thing gonna perform in the uh, Mars yard. Yeah, things, can, things like that I need to like manage. Manage, okay. Coming to the electronics part. Yeah, um, the engine is like carbureted so there's not much electronics going on there uh, but uh, like there's this uh, IOT mechanism like IOT circuit system that I've made uh, it actually monitors the engine dynamics uh, basically like engine temperature oil pressure and uh, like there's actually we can actually turn on the engine with our phone so we can see all this uh, vehicle dynamics right with our phone so that, there's that and there's a custom two-step revolumeter that I made for this thing uh, so what basically it does is uh, you are familiar with the launch control system mm. so uh, you need to like put you put your vehicle in a race mode you need to first uh, like rev up your engine to the like three three thousand rpm, RPM right uh, in order to get the maximum grip and maximum launch uh, you need to stay in that particular rpm so in order to stay that automatically you need to make this uh, custom circuit that's why there's a two step the first step will uh, stay put the rpm in 3000 okay. and the second step is automatically kicks in when it reaches to like a uh, 7000 rpm so uh, there's a button here in the steering uh, if you press that button the first step will engage and it will stay in 3000 rpm okay. plus you can actually modify uh, that rpm range like there's a center console for that okay. uh, i made a like um, a display and a menu system for this thing coming to the interior part yeah what are the specs right now so you can see a central console system here okay. uh, it does have a display and there's a, a fuel 
fuel pump switch and there's a starter button and this is the headlight and this is the hazard button plus uh, this is the IOT system that you need to engage like when when you're trying to turn on your uh, vehicle with the phone uh, you need to first turn this on and second is the DR light and third is the alternate switch which just kicks in automatically you don't have to turn it on and this is a uh, power saving mode the system will automatically shut off some uh, some unwanted electronic gimmick stuff so you can save battery there so like if you if you want to put the, uh, put this vehicle on the show you don't have to waste that much battery you know? so you need to turn this on uh, for that plus uh, when it comes to like uh, the steering wheel uh, you got this attachment here uh, first you need to plug this in and uh, need to turn the vehicle on so you see that uh, black rumble actually nice. that's the name of the vehicle black rumble and that shows up first time and in the home uh, it normally shows the rpm engine rpm speed and uh, when you push this button uh, this goes to a menu system you can see menu and if you twist this thing uh, this goes to the two-step limiter actually it, it only have one option right now uh, i didn't have the time to put other option plus uh, if you uh, press this again you go to that same settings and the first step when you press again you can actually adjust uh, uh, set up first stage rpm in currently it's on 4000 rpm you can reduce that to 3000 and uh, for that's actually three to four is the maximum range that's the constraint and you can all adjust that with this uh, rotary encoder right here see and put that in 4000 and there's a second step it's, it's automatically kicking it's actually in 6000 rpm you can go all the way up to 8000 rpm okay. and uh, yeah when you press this uh, it goes to the back and you press again and when you come to this uh, menu you need to press again to save the all the settings okay and you uh, come back to the home page yeah and what are the rest switches uh this switch is for the first steps to kick in uh, these two are for the horn mm. uh, these are for the high beam and this is for the uh, hazard and this is for the indicator and uh, this is the center console rotary encoder okay yeah. so brother where you got the in inspiration of the steering wheel um actually i designed this steering wheel so that i can fit my leg inside so uh, yeah you can see right here like it's actually okay. that much close to my leg so that's why i uh, flattened this side and also the top side so yeah you can fit in com comfortably so uh, initially the design uh, the dimensions were like uh, uh, at the time i was so small like i was not that grown up then the puberty kicks in <laughs> and after that i i grew like five feet seven so which affected the overall design i, I designed it actually according to uh, the height of me at that time, at that time. so that's so you were effect. redesigned uh, no, actually. <laughs> That's why it's so difficult to fit in. Fit inside, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, then I uh, actually modified the um, seat so that I can <coughs> adjust. Okay. So there's adjustability in that. So coming to the gearbox. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, I was said earlier, like the engine is in the rear, so you need to make some adjustabilities in the uh, gear shifting mechanism. So like um, usually traditionally if a front wheel engine got a gear shifting mechanism from the back of the engine so in this case the engine is in the back so that mechanism also comes in the back so you need to connect uh, the gear shifting uh, as usually as the edge pattern but you need to get that connection from the rear so that's why i made this custom mechanism it's actually a two a divided into two mechanism like there's actually a rotational part and a linear movement part so uh, there's adjustabilities in that you can actually uh, adjust the travel uh, speed and travel length. You can actually uh, customize it to short shift. Actually, this is now in a um, more simpler, I adjusted it so that I can shift it simply. Uh, but you can actually adjust it to form a short shift. Okay. And uh, handbrake? Yeah. This is a hydraulic e-brake. E um, so. Uh, I built it using a clutch master cylinder from a Bolero car. So what what happens here is actually like uh, the pedal box from here. Uh, uh, press, when you press the brakes, it actually goes to the. This is the input of this master cylinder. So what it actually does is when you're not trying to engage the handbrake, uh, the fluid comes here and goes to the rear part, and uh, 
traditionally it works as no, normal brakes. But when you actually engage this thing, uh, it's actually cut off the fuel uh, from here. So it doesn't go back to the uh, master cylinder on the front. But what it does is it's actually pumped into the rear brakes and engages uh, the rear brakes alone. So you, get, you can actually drift that, drift the vehicle using this. Okay, coming to the speedometer. Yeah, uh, this is actually a cheap Chinese version of a Ducati instrument cluster uh, that I actually imported from Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba or something like Banggood, yeah. Uh, imported from Banggood, uh, it cost me like 4,000. So it's actually got a uh, RPM speed, uh, indicators and um, uh, fuel pressure and uh, like uh, fuel uh, fuel level. Exactly, okay. B basically uh, some normal things that you find in a uh, motorcycle. So you custom the petrol tank and all? Ah yeah, uh, this is actually a 11 litre petrol tank which is uh, kind of small for this vehicle. Uh, but uh, the tank is made up of um, GI sheet. Uh, there is a fuel pressure regulator right here. So you can actually, uh, when you do some drifting application, you need more fuel pressure so you can adjust that. Uh, plus uh, there is this cap. Uh, so actually, uh, it's a fully submergible fu fuel pump inside. So uh, it's, a, it's in a f pressure for the carburetor and everything. Yeah, works everything smoothly. No okay. leaks. Uh, yeah. And coming for the exhaust. Yeah. You custom made it. In. Yes. Uh, this is actually the hard part. Uh, I think, like, uh, you need to dig weld this thing using a special series of stainless steel. So that procedure, thick welding procedure is really hard. I actually, uh, most of the part uh, here in welding, welded using thick welding procedure, uh, but when it comes to uh, stainless steel, it's really hard when, you, when you're using thick welding. So you actually clean this stuff, you need to clean it at most. Uh, there should be no residue or any stuff like that. This is gonna actually affect the weld, overall weld, when there's some kind of, uh, dirt inside so you need to clean that up plus uh, the filler material is a higher class stainless steel uh, you need to back purge a, a technique you need to like uh, uh, hunting part was really hard for me uh, plus there's a, um, a heat insulator inside uh, this one's called a, a ceramic wool uh, which you find in a normal high, high end uh, exhaust system uh, you actually use it to insulate rooms uh, from heat and all, all that uh, thermal insulation stuff. So actually, it's a great insulator for heat. I actually used it inside. So you can actually smoothen the sound also. Um, and you need to custom make a manifold for this thing. So yeah, it's actually, a, uh, it's actually really hard for me. Like you need to make this custom white pipes. Okay. And this pen. So entire build, this was your toughest part? Yeah. The welding part was really hard. Very hard. So you started welding for this thing? Yeah, uh, I didn't have any welding machine at the time. Huh. So what I did uh, was like there's actually a local uh, rental shop nearby. Uh, they usually rent welding machine for like 100, 100 rupees per day. Okay. So I actually uh, uh, got that and uh, did my practice on that. Yes. So each and every part is your hard work itself? Yeah, something you want to do, you need to do it. 100%. 100%. You yeah. want to give you 100 percentage, so you yeah. are... I actually tried to give my 100 percentage. Uh, that's why most of the things are like uh, what I wanted. But some portions are not that much great. Like these portions, uh, the structural integrity is not that great. Okay. Um, You're given for aesthetic purpose. Yeah, yeah given for aesthetic. Uh, but uh, I'm actually planning to improve that. Uh, plus this thing is uh, fi made up of fiberglass, not the carbon fiber. It's actually a carbon fiber vinyl. And, uh, and coming for the aerodynamic part, what all you have invested? Yeah, actually used uh, computer fluid dynamics for actually uh, getting the aer aerodynamic for this vehicle. So that's why I, I designed this thing and uh, gave it to the computer and see how the aerodynamics affect the overall vehicle. Okay. So that uh, that's how I designed this thing. Uh, it's actually good uh, for the aerodynamics. Plus this thing is actually over for this vehicle. Doesn't go that much speed, so you don't need that much downforce. Downforce. Uh, it's actually and creating a uh, lot of downforce, like this this much sweep. No? You don't need that much for a vehicle like this. Okay, and the engine is all on the rear part. Yeah. And from your family side, who's uh. your support? 
like both my parents supported me like a huge extent like uh, they are this mediocre family they don't have that much to give but they gave me their 100% yes, yes, yes. they was honest they believed in me uh, they actually gave me everything what they got but for something uh, some building something like this uh, money is a huge factor so I actually didn't force them to give give them money they actually gave them uh, just by seeing my hard work so they actually wanted to support me Th that's why they give some some amount of money but uh, when you don't want to compromise on the build you need that extra money uh, to buy these high quality stuffs so I actually had to do some part-time jobs actually a lot of part-time jobs uh, to get this uh, like I actually made like 70 uh, one uh, near one lakh rupees from that so i used that to buy ho high quality material materials and uh, you are not coping any of your material cost or anything no you are giving you 100 percent 100 percent yeah i actually don't want to like if you're building something mm. you need to build it properly properly yeah you have to go through all these engineering stuffs uh, usually you don't want to make something that easily uh, get wrecked yeah. so actually I learned how not to do it how not to build the stuff that's why okay. I learned and from there I gradually uh, I came up to oh, this is, is this your dream project <laughs> no this is not my dream project this is actually my uh, test project test to project. test my capabilities that's okay. that's all. and uh, I think you are one in this thing <laughs> <laughs> coming to the wheels yeah uh, this is actually uh, racing tires uh, all four uh, all four of them are racing tires and actually forged wheels this is one actually uh, from my college uh, it's actually purposed for um, uh, supra car no not the supra car there's a competition called supra for formula students okay. fashion so the students who create this uh, standard vehicle according to their specification and uh, go for this competition so the competition is like a, a track race uh, so you need this uh, tires, good grips and good forged wheels. So, so I actually got that. Luckily I got this thing from them. Okay. And yeah. coming to the suspension part? Uh, in the rear is actually a normal McPherson strut in, that you usually found in normal cars. Normal cars. Um, what I actually did is I actually put a, a secondary sway bar in the rear also. Okay. So you get extra more stability when you're drifting. Uh, plus the camera angle is like a uh, negative 1.5 for rear that is especially uh, I tuned it for like drifting purposes like you need to do some donuts you need to get that extra grip so that's why I uh, cambered that to uh, that specific angle it's a negative camera. So while building itself you want a drift car? Yes <laughs> that's the initial plan that's why I put the engine in the rear and a uh, whole weight in the rear so that I can do this donut and donut. drift. So yeah, um, yeah, it's actually, uh, I learned to drift, like uh, only learned to drift a few weeks back. Uh, that's when I, like uh, I forgot to tighten some nuts. Those were some important nuts. But uh, some guy told me like, you need to tighten this up only then the wheels doesn't wobble. Uh, there's actually little wobble with them so i was not that confident when it comes to drifting Drifting. so after tightening all that up and the vehicle was so stable stable and, and it, it was easy to drift. you just need to like push the throttle dump the clutch and uh, just the steering the vehicle do all the stuff you don't you can sit there and enjoy and so sit back yeah. relax and enjoy yeah, yeah. and what are the future updates you are going to do in the car yeah one future update is putting a bigger turbo of course and uh, associated with that, you need to like put a bigger intercooler. So yeah, start, uh, increasing the power, maybe replacing the engine with a good one. Uh, initially, I want to make a electric car, mm. but the motor and the battery don't cost the whole build. Whole build so that's sorry. why I uh, changed my mind to put some in internal combustion engine. Okay, in future we can build one. Yeah, in future maybe I built an electric one or maybe I power this thing. I only want the power. So electric uh, electric cars have a lot of torque. Yeah. It's actually good for drifting. Drifting, yeah. yeah. Nowadays, cars have been switched to electric, electric for, drifting. for drifting. yeah. And recently, I came across the uh, internet to show a video of uh, car drifting, electric car drifting. Yeah, the Ken Block Gym Car yeah. e-tron. The Audi e-tron got a lot of torque and they do this massive stand with the electric car. Bro, coming to the seats. 
Uh, this is actually a bucket seat, uh, actually custom made with my dimensions. So this is basically a material uh, that I uh, liked about, like this does look like Alcantara, but it's not. Uh, uh, it's some cheap material, but it's really tough, especially it's good for something, uh, some road purpose like this one. Um, like there's a, a dual stitching and there's actually a frame inside that I built. So I, I didn't stitch this thing myself. I, I gave it to some, some guy, usually like a uh, tailor guys doesn't accept this type of uh, frame and they, they just don't uh, do it on something that we give. So I, have, I was lucky enough, so some guy from uh, some Dubai came here and he was like, he was good at building custom seats for racing purpose. So I happened to got his connection and uh, he just made this specially for me. Uh, I gave him the material, I gave him the frame and uh, he gave me the seat like this. And actually I really liked it. Uh, it. It does suits with the vehicle, especially that stitching color. Yeah, everything matches and with yeah, the vehicle matches itself. With the vehicle. Yeah. And the body? Uh, body is all mild steel, made up of mild steel. And, and the bottom portion and some areas which are critical for the strength are all welded up using pig welding. So they are really stronger. And some, some delicate, not like, doesn't require that much strength. It's all welded up using uh, arc welding to save up some cost. And uh, yeah, the bottom pipe is one single pipe bended. And so it, it doesn't compromise on the strength. So that's why I used one single pipe for that purpose. Uh, uh, rest of the stuff are made by cutted and welding okay. uh, procedure. Can yeah. you just break down the cost of the building? Yeah, uh, the material cost was like 50, around 50,000, the steel stuff. Uh, engine uh, cost me like 30. And uh, tires were free. And... Uh, Radiator, and Radi stuff. radiator cost me like two, three thousand. It's a, a second hand radiator, uh, doesn't cost that much. Um, plus, the suspension uh, cost me five thousand. Uh, that's also a second hand one. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have the uh, see, that's where I uh, sacrificed my uh, cost. Cost, yeah. I, I, if I had the money, I would upgrade those with the original one, the fresh one. Plus, the dampeners here, I need to change that one. Um, and talking about the cost, uh, then comes the brakes. And there are four disc brakes, so it cost me like um, four thousand. And uh, some some other portions are like you need to buy these materials, uh, the uh, leather, um, electronic stuffs, and uh, yeah, it it, uh, it cost me like uh, ten thousand miscellaneously. Yeah. And the overall cost. Uh, overall cost was like around three lakhs. Around three lakhs, yeah, I yeah. built yeah. this buggy. Uh, and I, I talked to some engineers and uh, car enthusiasts, and uh, uh, when I talked about the money, they were like so excited. Like, uh, uh, they, they were saying like, it, it would cost around ten lakhs if, uh, if you, if they are making like, if uh, the cost was all reduced to be just because I, most of the parts are hand built. Hand built. That's why it. it, it it only costs three lakhs. Okay, and if a person is coming and asking you, he needs to build a buggy. Yeah. Are you interested in building for them? Building for them. Um, currently, no, I don't have the time. Okay. But if there is no other option, uh, other than my career in computer science, mm -hmm. maybe I need to come back to this where I uh, naturally have my instincts on building something like. Okay. This. Yeah. If uh, anybody is watching this uh, is a capable of sponsoring and you can definitely reach him out and he will do it yeah i'll do my best if yeah building one something like this for you especially for you <laughs> <laughs> and coming to the pedal box what is the specialty yeah uh, this is a custom pedal box uh, uh it, it have a brake biasing enabled so you can adjust the brake biasing between the front and the back so what what brake biasing actually mean is like you can actually uh, adjust the distribution of uh, brake pressure that you apply on the pedal just by twisting this bolt like you can see uh, you can actually uh, adjust the pressure applying uh, distributing on the front and the back there's actually two master cylinder for that 
uh, one master cylinder is for the front and one is for the back. So e the distribution is among these two master cylinders. So you can adjust the distribution using that bolt. And plus, uh, it's like a rally segment car. There's no mm -hmm. power brakes in it. You actually need to give all that uh, foot power uh, in order to get that braking. So you need to. You don't have to give that much pressure. Like if you give that much, the front wheels will lock up. So you don't want that that going to happen. Um, plus, yeah, uh, according to the weight distribution, uh, you can adjust the uh, adjust the braking force with that thing. So it huge, is hugely effects on uh, cornering and stuff. Cornering and stuff. Yeah. Nice. Uh, plus the uh, clutch, you can actually adjust uh, the clutch pressure, clutch travel. Uh, there's actually a lot of holes. You, you, you can actually put into different holes to get different uh, leverage. Um, and also comes with the accelerator. You can actually put into different holes for different leverage. So you can uh, uh, feel that p uh, pedal. Uh, go, uh, going to affect the acceleration and acceleration and yeah. So apart from the parents, who are there to support you in the college? Yeah, um, uh, in my college, my friends were with me. Uh, they hugely uh, helped me help me with the mechanism. Uh, like uh, when when something fails, they were always with me to fix things up, and um, you know, f for cleaning and as well. Uh, there was huge support for me. Uh, they took the initiative to bring the vehicle here in Kusat. And uh, yeah, for everything, they were, they were with me every time uh, when the vehicle was here. So, okay. like, I would like to introduce them to this video. So, please welcome <laughs> my friends. Hi, Arun. So, this. so, hi, my name is Salman. So, uh, we are BTEC students, uh, we are classmates. Hi, I'm Mursad. I'm Kajol. Uh, yeah, I'm also studying with him. I'm Nandara. I'm Asna. You can explain why I also your feeling in helping him and all in the college. You do the honor. Uh, we really liked the initiative he took and all the effort we put in into making in this. So we are supporting him the best we can. Can we go for a ride? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, jump in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.